Hi folks and welcome back to Physics with Captain Rod. The purpose of this video is to just give an example, a very a relatively simple example of how Newton's second law is applied and how it ties together with uh, the study of motion. So in this example here we've got this car which we're going to assume is a thousand kilogram car and we got Bill here who's going to push on that car with a force of 300 Newtons. Um, that's what the force I call F sub B is going to be, force from Bill. Uh, we're going to assume that there's no frictional forces or any other uh, important forces to consider acting on the car. And what we're going to do here is we're going to try to calculate the distance that car is going to travel in a time of 10 seconds if Bill can hold that 300 Newton force constant. So when you're, when you're applying Newton's second law, the first thing we do is we draw uh, what are called free body diagrams. So if I think about what a free body of the car might look like, the first force that always comes to mind is the gravitational force. So I'm going to go ahead and put a force vector uh, for the car. And that force vector would be straight down. And what we call this car, or this force, we can call anything we want. I usually label it as mg because that's how it's calculated. But if you wanted to label it w for weight or maybe f sub g for gravitational force, that's fine. Any of those is fine. I usually leave it mg because ultimately that's how we usually calculate the gravitational force. Now, when you're drawing free bodies, you know, remember that forces come in two types, field and contact forces. So gravity, you know, in first semester physics at least, gravity is pretty much the only field force that we deal with. All the other forces are contact forces. And what I always recommend is, you know, define your system here as, you know, inside of this surface. If I look at this surface here that I'm putting right around the car here, and you're looking for things coming from outside of the surface and contacting the car. Well, the tires are contacting the car at the road, and Bill is pushing on it. Now, there's the, let's talk about the tire contacts. There's four of them. Typically, what we do is we just kind of group these all together into one force and, and call it one force. That force will be up or down the car. Now, these are examples of what are called normal forces. So I'm going to go ahead and put a normal force in my free body. Whoops. Except I'm going to do so in the color black. And I usually label it N for normal force. Again, where this one's coming from, this is the force of the basically the ground supporting the car. And then, of course, we've got Bill applying a force uh, to the left on that car. Now, where we put that force vector really doesn't matter. I'm going to put it all along this line here. I'm going to go ahead and put the force vector right here. And there's my force from Bill. I'll even call it F sub B. Now, whether you whether you draw it like here pushing on the car or like here pulling on the car, so to speak, that doesn't really matter. Force vectors have what's called line of action. You can put this force vector anywhere along this line you want. So the important thing right now is to realize, all right, this is for the gravitational force. This guy is for the tires supporting, being supported by the road. And this is the 300 Newton force that Bill is applying to that car. Now, Next, we apply Newton's second law, and Newton's second law is F equals ma, but keep in mind that when you say F equals ma, this force needs to be the net force acting on the car. Now, when we look at the this force here, we've got the normal up, we've got the mg down, and just by observation, you know, somebody just watching this car here, the car's not going to accelerate up or down. That's because these two forces are equal, or in the language of vectors, we would say they add to zero. And I can actually write an equation out that says that sum of all forces in the y direction is equal to zero in this problem because the car is not accelerating up or down. This is not an important equation here for us, given our question here. Um, yeah, hold on one moment, please. Okay, folks, back. To, sorry about that. I had to answer my uh, door. So let's see. <clears throat> so we got our free body. We got the force exerted by the ground upward on the car. We got the gravitational force down, and then we have the force that Bill is exerting on this car to the left. When we look at the y direction, these two forces uh, would sum to zero. And now this one is, I'll just say, by observation because this car is not accelerating up or down. And to answer the questions, um, these two are not going to be important in this problem. To answer the questions, we're after this guy right here is the important force. So when we apply Newton's second law now which is the net force is equal to ma, and we add, you know, by net force we mean the vector sum of all forces. So I'm going to say sum of all forces equals mass times acceleration. I'm going to go ahead and call left positive because basically everything's pointing to the left. So we have the force that Bill is applying. 
drawing. There are no other forces left or right, so that's it for the left-hand side. So this is the net force acting on that car, and that's going to equal the mass of the car times the acceleration of the car. I'm going to go ahead and put numerical values in, so this is 300 newtons equals mass of the car, 1,000 kilograms, times A, the acceleration. All right, next step is to solve for A. We can do so by dividing both sides by 1,000 kilograms. Remember, anything you do to one side, you have to do to the other. So over on the right, these cancel. Over on the left, when you take 300, divide by 1,000, you get 0.3. So our acceleration, I'm going to write this down, is going to be 0.3. And when you take a Newton and divide by a kilogram, it works out to a meter per second squared. You can see that right from Newton's second law. If you take a Newton, which is a kilogram meter over second squared, and divide by a kilogram, you get meter per second squared. Now, we've used Newton's second law, and we've found the acceleration of the car, and then the big question is, what do we do with that? So, if you're in my uh, one of my physics classes, we probably spent a bunch of time uh, talking about graphical motion, or I'm sorry, uh, talking about one-dimensional motion and using graphs to analyze the motion of a system, so I'm going to do that. What I'm going to do is draw a velocity graph for the car. If the car starts with zero velocity, or at, at t equals zero, uh, the velocity is zero, that would be here. And the car is accelerating uh, to the left at 0.3 meter per second squared, and if this force stays constant, then this acceleration stays constant, and that's going to give us a linear velocity graph. So this graph is going to look something like this. Now, we're going to look at this out to 10 seconds. So at this point right here, we're at 10 seconds. This V, we don't know our final, I'll just call this our final velocity. Now, an important thing to realize is how acceleration relates to this graph. Acceleration is the slope of a velocity graph. So that's going to allow us to write an equation, 0.3 meter per second squared is equal to, now remember, slope is rise over run. So our run is 10 seconds. Our rise is what I'm calling V final. So this is going to be V final over 10 seconds. So we can solve this by multiplying both sides by the 10 seconds. And you get 3 meter per second when you take 0.3 times 10. All right, so now this is a known uh, height on a graph here. So at 10 seconds, we know that our car is moving at 3 meter per second. Now to get the distance traveled, Hopefully we know how to get the uh, displacement of a particle from a velocity graph. And if you don't, you can go back and take a look at one of my videos on how to find the displacement of a particle from a velocity graph. And the answer is this area bound under this curve here will give us the displacement. Because this is a triangle, its area is one half. The base is 10 seconds. And then the height is the final velocity, which is three meter per second. Let's see, what do we get out of that? 30 divided by 2, 15 meters. So, uh, this is just intended to be a relatively simple example. The free body actually ended up being more complicated than it really needed to be in this example. Because there's nothing happening vertically and there's no frictional forces, really all we needed to realize was that this was the net force acting on the car. And then when we set the net force equal to MA, that allows us to find the acceleration of the car. Then the million dollar question, what do we do with the acceleration? Well, what I do is I usually go to a velocity graph. Once we know the acceleration, that means we know the slope of this graph. And then we can use concepts of slope and area to uh, calculate quantities. So in this case, we use the slope to find the V final and then the area to find the uh, distance that the car traveled. So hope this video helps demonstrate these concepts. Have a great day.